<laughs> what are you doing, Barry? What are you doing? Hmm? How's my boy? That's my boy. He's a good boy. Barry and I are out here at the cedar. Uh, one of the hundreds of cedars around here. This one has these beautiful... Oop, hang on, let me zoom out a little bit. These beautiful blueberries. Aren't those gorgeous? I love them for so many reasons. First of all, you can dry them, you can make a tea with them, along with the juniper tips. You can use them in oh so many different formulations, which just make them one of my favorite all-time botanicals. They smell good, they taste good, they're just wonderful. But today, Actually, what I'm going to be doing is harvesting needles for a couple of different formulations. You've seen me do this before if you've been here on the channel uh, for some time. Uh, but the I just wanted to show the beauty. It is, you know, we're just talking about the first few days of November, but the blueberries are the ones that will be harvested year, this year. The white ones will be harvested next year. Anywhere there may be some little green ones, they'll be harvested in two years. And at some point, whoop, let me zoom back out here. At some point, you may actually see, hang on, let me move my finger here. Some really dark ones here. You see those? And my dirty fingernail, and that's only because I squished a berry. <laughs> But these really dark ones are delicious. And I've made several different things from these in the past. But these, to me, they've started to dry. That's why they're black. They're not like these beautiful blue ones that are perfection. These have already dried. And... They are great for using, for grinding up and using in several botanicals as well. I'll talk more about that, but I just wanted to get some video of one of the trees that this is one of the girls. There are boys and girls in this plant. The girls have the berries. Now let me show you a boy. Now this one is a boy and you're gonna see, let me zoom out, my apologies. This is a boy and you can see a boy doesn't have any of those berries on it. What it will have during the spring is a little puffs of yellow. That's the pollen that will actually, it's what helps the girls make the berries. It helps to pollinate the female trees. This is a boy tree. And I will generally harvest these before I harvest the girls if I'm just looking for needles because the girls are putting all their effort into making those berries. So it's a pretty rough time. The boys have already done their stuff. They made their pollen months ago and they've got this new growth on them now, as you can see here. So this is what's ready to harvest. And I just wanted to share a little bit of that info with you. We'll go inside and we're gonna put this together. So of course the next step was to get this dehydrated. This is what the cedar looks like after I've put it through the dehydrator. Let me move this out of the way. And then you get this beautiful wreath-like structure here. And actually, if you put a preservative on this, you can actually save this as kind of a wreath shape and structure for quite a long time. But that's for another video. Right now, we're actually going to be destroying it and <laughs> at least its structure and putting it into the old Vitamix here. Dropping pieces. This is the best way I have found to reduce it. It 
It smells so lovely. It's one of my favorite scents of the season. Uh, of course, I harvest. Uh, I harvest the cedar year round. Now, earlier I was talking to you about the boys and the girls, about the differences. And I was talking about the little pollen on the boys. I don't know if you can see that or not, but these little yellow areas are the actual pollen that helps to fertilize the girls making those beautiful berries. So it's easy to tell this came off of a male plant, this area here. Then I have a, my cedar container here, my cedar leaf container, and I do the same thing for the cedar wood that is harvested. Almost identical, a little bit different. I have to use a wood grinder for the wood, but for these needles, this works very, very well. All right, so I've got my goat milk, and my oils and butters and lye solution all in the bucket here. And I'm afraid this bucket's gonna get a little full. <laughs> I didn't think about this far enough, but I'm too far along now. I may have to move it to something else, but that's okay. So this is my uh, cedar leaf infused oil. And I'm first going to get all of this incorporated and then we'll come back and talk about the essential oil and the bottle. <laughs> so let me get this going first. Here, let me zoom a bit for you. Make it a little easier for you to see what's going on here. So I did add quite a bit of additional cedar needle there. I want this, this is a very exfoliating soap. That's the purpose of it. This is, you know, much more exfoliating than just pumice. This is more made for, well, I don't want to be gender specific and say it's just for men. Um, this, oh, and by the way, this is cedar wood, essential oil in it, Texas cedar wood at that. Um, but while I won't say it's just for men, it isn't. It's for anybody that likes um, a very exfoliating soap. I will say that this is a favorite of a lot of men. <laughs> and I'll just say that. <laughs> All right. There we go. Here we go. I'm going to got a couple of these I have to fill so I'll move this one over this way move the bucket over that way this will be messy because I'm the one pouring it <laughs> I'm only being partially silly it's actually true I just am rather messy sometimes I try I really do try. I think a lot of it 
I thought, I used to blame the tools. Oh, I don't have the right, uh, I don't have the right dipper, uh, ladle, or I don't have, uh, you know, the right mold or something. I would always try to blame it on something. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's just, and I'm not one for titling oneself as a messy person or a sloppy person because I'm not those things necessarily. Uh, but this is an area that I'm not as skilled at when it comes to see all the drips. That is just the way it is. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to be wasteful. I certainly don't want to have drips and spills and things like that. And sometimes, you know, if I have a larger spill, I will save that. I'll scrape that up into something else, into a maybe a, you know, a smaller mold or something so that I can use it myself. Um, I can't necessarily put it on the market because it's a generally an ugly, odd sized or shape. So, so I've learned from past experience that the cedar, uh, when I use the cedar needle, it does brown a little bit, but that's natural. That's its natural state. Um, so it's a very what many would call an olive green, meaning it's got some brown in it. Okay, let me get the other mold up here. Um, but, uh, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, the color. But I personally love it. Um, it'll have such a pretty speckledy color as it, and it will lighten a bit as it uh, cures. So by the time you see the pictures of this, it will have, of course, you've already seen them. It has uh, dried, you know, and well, it is kind of the part of the curing process as the water, or in this case, milk, as the water portion of the milk. That's right, milk is mostly water, even goat milk. <laughs> Uh, once that evaporates away, um, the and as it continues to, the soap generally will lighten quite substantially. Well, that depends on the ingredient, of course. Because right now, this just looks like a sort of a tanny brown. See that big old splat there? Now that was my fault. I should have cleaned my ladle, been more careful. We'll come back in a few minutes. We're going to take this out of the mold, okay? <laughs> all right. So I've got them all unmolded. The next thing I'm doing show you. I'm move a few of these out of the way. I'm flocking them in the <laughs> very same uh, cedar needle powder. They lightened, as I mentioned, they would quite substantially. They're a very kind of a light green right now. So I'm just giving them a spray a bit of alcohol and then dipping them in the cedar needle powder like so just to kind of give them a bit of a flocked look and I think it works very well on these and what's great about these bars is the ergonomic of them. They're very easy to hold in the hand. So for scrubbing and that sort of thing, I don't want to press on them too hard. They are a fresh soap, so they're a little uh, soft, but hopefully you get the idea. 
but that's really it. I just wanted to give them a little something extra, and I think adding that to the outside just gives them something attractive. Of course, it'll come off easily the first time they're washed, but I just thought that it was just a little something extra. I hope you enjoyed this, everyone. These will be in the store in early December. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. As always, it's a pleasure having you here. Um, there's nothing I enjoy more than meeting with you all and chatting about soap and potions and all the good fun stuff that we get to talk about. Uh, I will try to respond back to some comments. I'm really far behind in that. Work has been insane. So from my green fingers to you, have a lovely day, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>